So you've decided you finally want to go out and buy yourself a tank or another type of military vehicle. You've done your research and saved up your hard earned cash and finally after months of looking you have finally found the perfect vehicle. Well before you go jumping straight in you're going to need to remember there are some people who are going to try and swindle you out of your cash. So this video is about some common scams you have to look out for when buying a military vehicle. Hi there, my name is Alex Garner, I hope you're having a fantastic day. If you do like the video, please do be sure to like and subscribe down below. So if you didn't know already, anyone can go out and buy a military vehicle. From what we call a soft skin vehicle, such as a DAF truck, all the way up to an armoured Soviet T-55 tank. For the most part, you can go out and buy one as easily as buying a car. But as with every industry, there are always people who are looking to make a quick buck and are willing to scam other people. And more importantly, trying to scam you. So let's start off with one of the most annoying scams. You've found, let's say, a Chieftain tank. It looks great, it is in good condition, and you're happy to buy it. So you pay the guy thinking that's job done, all you need to do now is get it delivered. Since you may have never driven one properly before, and not wanting to crash it into the back of a lorry with a 55 ton tank, the seller offers to load it for you, so you don't even need to be there for the loading. You're thinking that's great, it makes your life a lot easier, but then it arrives. It's a different vehicle, it's still a Chieftain, but it's not the one you've bought. It's a worse one that the seller was just trying to palm off to you without you realising. Now I know it might sound far fetched, but I know personally of a few times this has actually happened. Especially with smaller vehicles where the seller has a lot of them, such as CVRTs or Land Rovers. Now you can imagine the seller has done this to try and get one past you and sell the worst vehicle for a higher price. And a lot of the time it does unfortunately work as you may not notice it straight away or it may be the same on the outside but mechanically it can be in worse condition than the one you thought you bought. You might try and send it back but that's going to cost you thousands of pounds in transport, especially because the seller won't pay as they'll claim it's the same vehicle. Or you can try and sue them but realistically how are you going to prove that it's a different vehicle? Most people end up having to keep the vehicle they have now overpaid for. So how do you avoid this? Firstly, only buy off people that you trust or know well. Secondly, take photos inside of the vehicle and outside and especially of any defining features that are unlikely to be on any other kind of vehicle. And third, if you can, try to be there when the vehicle gets loaded. That way you can check it over again and make sure you're happy with it before it's transported off their property. The biggest scam and the hardest to avoid is people selling vehicles that aren't exactly what they seem. By this I mean vehicles that have the wrong parts that the seller is trying to sell as genuine. Take the Ford GPW Jeep behind me for example, these are an absolute minefield when trying to find a genuine one. Now they created roughly about 650,000 of these and the Woolies Jeeps and about 25,000 more Hotchkiss Jeeps after the war. The big issue, they all look extremely similar. There are differences but it can be hard to see if you haven't done your research. A lot of wartime Jeeps get used by militaries after the war and have had a lot of modifications. If you're buying a wartime Jeep, it's very likely to have post-war modifications, but that's just the way it is with these vehicles. I have heard in the past of people selling post-war Hotchkiss Jeeps as World War II Ford GPWs. To someone who doesn't know much about them, but wants one to drive and have fun with, this could be a very costly scam. World War II Jeeps go for thousands more than post-war Jeeps and some scammers out there will try and look. But it doesn't always mean that the person selling the vehicle is actually trying to scam you. Sometimes it can be hard to tell the difference between different variations of the same vehicle and they may just not know. Or even in the past they may have been scammed and never actually found out that it wasn't the right vehicle. Just make sure you do your research into the vehicle you are wanting to buy so you can check for these bits and bobs that might not be right. It may be bad to say but this is probably the most ballsy and ambitious scam I've ever heard of and I think it's only ever happened once. I've heard of a guy years ago, he was selling I think a World War 2 Jimmy truck. He'd been talking to a buyer, sending photos, all the normal stuff he'd do. But he then set up a viewing to be at a military show where the vehicles were being driven around and where the Jimmy truck had also been driven around earlier on that day. So the buyer came and saw it driving around and then later on went to have a look at it with the scammer. Of course nobody really thought any different to two guys walking around the vehicles at a public event, so no one was really that suspicious. They did the deal, he paid in cash and it wasn't until much later when the buyer went to take the vehicle away where it all came clear. As you can imagine, the scammer was long gone with the money. This was years ago, well before the internet, so you can imagine there wasn't really much the guy could do. And I must say, it was definitely quite an ambitious scam, and I've never heard of anyone doing anything similar since. Another common scam, which happens a lot on eBay, is somebody sells an extremely cheap vehicle that seems way too good to be true. The way this scam works is a person will put on the vehicle for thousands of pounds less than everybody else. This happens a lot for Jeeps on eBay as I've seen some people advertising them for as little as seven or eight thousand pounds, 
which rose up a lot of red flags since the current market price is around 18 to 20 thousand pounds in the UK. The unsuspecting buyer will message them and the scammer will say something along the lines of they've had loads of people interested in the vehicle but if you want to pay them a deposit of say let's say 500 pounds they won't sell to anyone else and you can come and view it. I'm sure you know where this is going. You sell them money through PayPal or a payment method, then they just stop replying to you. Through some payment methods, you can't get a refund, so you've ended up just paying money for nothing. The only way to avoid this is to never put down a deposit on something without seeing it in person, unless you are willing to risk losing the money. One of the hardest scams to avoid sometimes isn't actually a scam. A lot of private military vehicles are kept in people's sheds or garages, and if they've been there for a long time, it's very likely there's going to be a lot of stuff around them so you can't actually test drive the vehicle. If they're selling the vehicle as a runner and want top money, this is where you have to watch out. If you can't see it running and driving, then how do you know if it actually is? They may just be saying it to get you to pay more, and then once it's back at your house, you're going to find it's going to cost you thousands of pounds in repairs to get it going. This one's hard because they may not actually be trying to scam you, they may just want to clear out their shed to get the vehicle out just for a potential buyer who ends up being a tyre kicker and has no intention of actually buying the vehicle. Which in this industry happens an awful lot. It's definitely one you need to watch out for but it doesn't automatically mean the vehicle is a scam. This is where you really need to look at the vehicle and do your research to try and figure out if you're willing to take the chance. Similar to the scam earlier where people send a different vehicle to the one you bought, this is where the seller removed bits and bobs off the vehicle after it's been sold. This happens a lot with smaller vehicles as a lot of them are dressed up with all the gear like bags, ammo belts, camo netting, the list just goes on. This stuff can cost thousands to replace and is definitely a slap in the face if the seller takes it off before the vehicle is shipped off to you. The best way to avoid this is to confirm with the seller, preferably in writing, so over text message or email, that you will get the vehicle with everything that is currently on it, and also to take some photos. This way you have proof of what you bought and a leg to stand on if the seller goes back on his word. Again, the single best way to avoid this is to actually be there when the vehicle is being loaded. This way you can check it over and make sure you're 100% happy with it. And finally, the seller says the vehicle is in great condition and runs well, but it ends up not being at all true. When you arrive to look at the vehicle, there are a few things you're going to want to do. Firstly, feel the engine. Is it worn? If so, why? Did they have to mess around with the vehicle to get it started before you got there, or were they simply just checking it before you arrived? It's hard to know, but you should also look for other clues to help you decide if this mint vehicle is actually as good as they say. Check for oil leaks on the floor underneath, as even a small oil leak can mean thousands of pounds you're going to have to spend. Is there a kind of easy start suspiciously close to the vehicle? That's suspicious. That's weird. Does everything under the hood look clean and fresh or does it look mackled together and holding on by rope? If it's being sold as mint and you notice these issues, just mention it to the seller. If he admits there is an oil leak and he's willing to haggle on the price, then it's likely he's not going to be a scammer. But if he's good with his words and he's trying to change the subject, then there may be a bigger issue with the vehicle that you won't find out until it's back of yours and then it's your issue. I hope this video has helped you in your hunt for a military vehicle. Just remember to do your research and be willing to go see the vehicle and help load it up onto the lorry. Keep written records of what's been said and remember, it is too good to be true, it likely is. Thanks again for watching the video. My name is Alex Garner. I hope you've liked the video and if you have, I'm sure you're going to like some of the videos that are currently popping up on screen now. Thank you and I'll see you guys next time.